Okay, good evening everybody. My name is David Lee and uh, I'm your speaker tonight. Um, uh, I'm actually a drug and alcohol interventionist. I'm a drug and alcohol counselor. Uh, but I'm not really here to talk that much about that. Uh, do you guys know what an interventionist is? Yes. Yes. You guys have seen, some of you have seen the show. I get on a plane. I show up at a family's home, a family of somebody who's using drugs or alcohol. A uh, family member is. Could be a son, could be a daughter, could be a mom. Uh, and usually, a um, long time has gone on before of using drugs, of using drugs. And this individual just won't quit. And my job is to come out and work with the family and try and get them to agree to go to treatment. Um, again, that's not really what I'm here to talk to you about. Um, you guys, uh, everybody welcome to, uh, was it Night Out in a Box? Yeah. Where you guys get to spend a night tonight, uh, just like a homeless person. Some of you in boxes or tents. You guys get to spend a night out tonight uh, and experience what it's like to be homeless. You get to experience what it was like for me in real life many, many nights. Uh, yes, I'm an interventionist and a drug counselor. Uh, more importantly, I spent many, many nights homeless. Uh, I am also a recovering drug addict. And I made a series of choices in my life that put me in a position that you guys are going to be in for, for one night tonight. Um, to reframe it, uh, tomorrow morning you guys are going to wake up, your moms or dads are going to pick you up, or you're going to get in your car and you're going to go home. Um, let's change it up a little bit. Um, let's wave a magic wand. And when you guys go to out in your boxes tonight, the situation is a little bit different. Um, your family doesn't want anything to do with you. Uh, you can call them, collect, because you don't have a cell phone. You find a pay phone, you can call them, and the first words out of their mouth is, oh, it's you, don't ever call here again, click. The friends that you guys have, have long gone years ago. They don't want anything to do with you. You have no money. The clothes that you guys are wearing right now is all you got. Now, if you're lucky like I was, you could find a church that might be willing, if you show up at 6 o'clock in the morning and listen to a sermon with all the other homeless people that haven't showered for months, if you could sit and listen to that sermon, you'd be lucky to get maybe some eggs or pancakes or whatever have you, but you can't stay after that. After that, you have to go. Where do you go? That's up to you. And you walk around and you wander around until 1 o'clock in the afternoon where you can find another guy that's willing to give you another sermon in exchange for a sandwich. And that is your life. And if you're anything like me, every once in a while you'll sit head in your hands, and you'll reflect back on the choices that you made. So tonight is a little bit more about choices, and I want to leave you guys with something that maybe you can think about tonight. I could give you the speeches that I used to hear when I was in high school, say no to drugs and all that wonderful stuff. I heard them, and I still ended up down the road that I did. I'm going to open this up with a question, and, and I want you guys to give me the answer. That's what this night is about. I want to see if you guys can give me the answer to the question. And here's what it is. Uh, I graduated from uh, Griffith High School in 1988. Um, I was the student council president. I was the smartest kid in my high school. I was who's who among American high school students. I had a full ride scholarship. My brother, a year younger than me, also was the student council president. Um, I ended up a full blown drug addict. I ended up homeless, living on the streets. I ended up going to more rehabs than you guys can imagine. I ended up spending 10 years of my life trying to undo decisions that I made when I was your age. I tried to put the brakes on and I couldn't. I have spent more time in rehab than you guys have spent in high school or junior high. Add up your school, I have spent years in treatment trying to fix a decision that I made roughly when I was your age. So here's the question that we're going to start with and I want you guys to kind of, as we go through this, the question is, why did I become a drug addict and my brother didn't? And, and to jump a little bit ahead, you're probably thinking, well, probably because you experimented with drugs. When I was 15 or 16, my brother and I drank, we smoked pot together, we dropped acid together, we threw parties together. We were the party house. We were both starting off exactly the same. So the question is, why did I become a full-blown drug addict and my brother didn't? And that's the question. So we're going to start, we're going to go back through my life. And we're going to see if you guys can figure it out. My brother and I were both raised by the same parents, uh, my dad and my mom. We uh, grew up uh, not, not far from here. Um, 
my mom and dad are both alcoholics. Now, some of you might be thinking, maybe that's kind of what it was. But understand, back then when we were kids, we didn't necessarily know that they were alcoholics. Uh, my mom, would, uh, she would be sick uh, Saturday mornings, I noticed. She would be out late on Fridays. I noticed on Saturday morning she'd be sick, Sunday morning she'd be sick. Um, some people in this room might think that the reason I became a drug addict is because my parents are alcoholic. Is there anybody here that actually thinks that maybe that has something to do with it? Okay. There are some studies that show that if you have parents that drink or alcohol, it might lean towards it, but remember, here's the deal. My brother didn't become a drug addict. My brother did not become an alcoholic. I did. We were raised by the same parents. Um, my parents were very poor. Um, I, don't know if, I don't know what your situation is. I don't know much about your stories. Uh, on Monday mornings, me and my brother used to have to get up early and go to school early, and we would get a free lunch pass. That's how poor we were. We were one of the poorest kids on our block. And it was kind of embarrassing. Uh, nobody else had the free little lunch cards, not that I remember. And it was kind of embarrassing. I don't know why, but it, back then in my school, they were a different color than the regular lunch cards. And I was kind of embarrassed. It was one of the first times when I was a kid that I started noticing that maybe we were a little bit different. Um, we didn't have a lot of money. Um, is, there, is there anybody here? Do you guys think that maybe poverty has something to do with it? Um, do you think the fact that my family made less money than other people? Or maybe do you think it's because I felt uh, maybe I was a little insecure about not having a lot of money? Is there anybody that thinks that? You do? Why? Yeah, why? Maybe it's your way of rebelling against the situations you were automatically forced in. Okay, that I was poor? That I was poor, maybe I was a little resentful of the fact that I was poor? Let me explain what it was really like growing up in my family. I didn't even really know we were poor. See, my mom had this really cool ability. Um, she would save up her money. She was a waitress and a bartender, and she'd save up her money. Um, and she bought, back then, I'm really telling how old it, she bought an Atari 2600. I still play video games to this day, I've got all kinds of video games, but, but back then, video games weren't popular, they just came out. And my mom saved all of her money and she got us this Atari. And, and she had this ability to convince us, like we were the richest kids on the block. She was a single mom and she cared about us. So even though we were poor, she had this ability to kind of make things magic. I remember when we got our first bike and things like that. So, Later on in life, I tried to look back and figure out the why. I later figured out the why, and I'm going to explain to you what the why is later on. But, but back then, I thought maybe it was because I was poor. But remember, my brother was just as poor as I was, right? So we're growing up, right? And we're going through school. I was a smart kid. I was the smart kid. My brother was a jock. Again, I was probably the smartest kid in my high school. Um, could have done anything. Could have been anything. You know, um, my brother was good at sports. I was terrible at sports. I was so t I tried every single sport for like a week. I sucked at all of them. I did. I tried wrestling. I sucked at. I tried baseball. I don't know if it was because of my glasses, but I got bonked in the head, and everybody's laughing at me. Um, what about sports? Are any? Do you guys? Are you guys sports? Anybody who's sports people here? None of you guys play these sports. <laughs> we have no jocks in the entire room. There's a jock way in the back. Fingers, the jocks are sitting in the back. So uh, the, uh, what about sports? There are a lot of people that say that, that participation in extracurricular activities decreases your chances of kind of going down the bad road. Is there anybody here that thinks that maybe that's it? And I really want you guys to kind of start thinking about this. What do you think is the reason why? And, and sooner or later, you might actually get it. Um, Again, I was smart. Uh, it, it was a little bit awkward being smart. I don't know if any of you guys can relate to this. It was like, it seemed like everybody else had the answer. You know, like I was this dorky, Coke bottle glasses kind of kid. And back then, being smart was not cool. Uh, I was a computer geek, and, and back then, being a computer geek was definitely not cool. It was absolutely not. So it was this dorky kid, I like to read. You're not cool when you like to read. You know what I mean? I, I would read books and things like that. It, it seemed like, and I would look across the room and I'd see the jockey guy, and he like always had like the hot chicks with him. I didn't have girlfriends. I didn't have anything, man. I had like, it just sucked being me. It absolutely sucked being me. And I don't know why it sucked being me. It just did. 
I was restless, irritable, and discontent. I was uncomfortable in my own skin, and I wanted more, to, more than anything to, to be you. I wasn't good at anything. I wasn't good at sports. I wasn't good at plays. I didn't play a musical instrument. My hair started growing longer, so I started kind of looking like I was in a band, but I, I really wasn't. Now, what about that? My brother felt really comfortable in a group. He had girlfriends, that kind of thing. What about the popularity thing? My brother was more popular. My brother was younger than me, and he had a host of friends. He really did. He was the popular guy. I was kind of a dork. I was a scrawny kind of dork. What about that? What do you think? I'm going to call you out. Well, maybe it was, since your brother was more popular, maybe he did drugs. <clears throat> and then after you saw him doing drugs, you said, oh, he's doing drugs and he's cool. Maybe if I do drugs, I'll become cool. Actually, I started first. I'm the older brother. I paved the way. I started experimenting with, with alcohol and drugs. My brother jumped on board. And remember, the, the question is, why did I become a drug addict? And my brother didn't. Remember, we drank, we did drugs, we smoked pot in high school. Some of you guys have, you know? And I could give you the thou shalt not, and I can give you the, if you use drugs, you'll do this. You know, I, I heard those lectures, too. I, I saw those things. I don't know. Do they still do in high school, they still do the, the videos, the movies of the guy that wrecked his car and killed a family of five if you drink and all that stuff? Yeah, the scare stuff. Yeah, I saw all that. And it can have an effect. But you know what I thought is it'll never happen to me. And you'll think the same thing. You know? so, so here we go. So, so I'm going through high school, right? You know, I got my Coke bottle glasses. Um, my parents are both alcoholic. Um, what is it like being a, a kid in an alcoholic home? Uh, it is chaotic. And it is crazy. Um, they'll fight till 4 o'clock in the morning, calling each other names. When I'd have friends over, they'd be a little freaked out about the whole thing. Sometimes they'd leave. More often than not, they'd stay and tough it out because I was like, what's the big deal? They're fighting. I mean, bad fights. And you stay up till 4 o'clock in the morning and you wait for the fights to get over. And you show up at school and brush yourself off as if nothing had happened with two hours of sleep. You know, but you're a smart kid, so you can kind of get away with it. You do that. It's just normal. It's normal. Uh, sometimes you go over to a friend's house and you notice that things are a little bit different, um, that uh, they eat dinner at 5 o'clock every day. And you don't do that in your house. I don't drink. We don't eat dinner at 5 o'clock. Sometimes mom comes home, sometimes she doesn't. Living in an alcoholic home, uh, you're always waiting for the other shoe to drop. Uh, my stepdad, who was also an alcoholic, was kind of a mean drunk. Uh, sometimes uh, we would come home and he would explain uh, uh, to us in detail just what losers we were. Uh, sometimes he would, uh, we would come home and uh, he would uh, throw away all of our clothes. You come home, it's 3.15 after high school, and you no longer have any clothes. So you have to get on your bicycle and go to Jewel, you go to Osco and look in all the dumpsters that you can pull your clothes out of. Otherwise, what are you going to wear tomorrow? So there's some little bit of chaos going on in my life, right? My life is not fun. High school is not fun. Uh, even though you're smart, you get the good grades, uh, home is not fun. You come home from school and you first ask, is he drinking? And if she says yes, you don't come home. Uh, you stay out. Uh, back then, 7-Eleven had video games. You guys don't have too many video games, the big arcade games. Back then, arcade games were coming out. So I would stay out till 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning at the age of 12 playing video games, waiting for them to pass out or quit fighting so that I could catch some sleep and start school again the next day. What about my chaotic upbringing? What do you guys think? Um, what do you think? Why? Why did I become a drug addict and my brother did not? Okay, no problem. How about you? Um, maybe it has to do with because you're staying up so late and don't really have a mm -hmm. balanced lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So then you end up like taking drugs to kind of make yourself feel better? Um, mm, drugs did, yes. They kind of made me feel better. And yeah, that's kind of along the lines. Um, that's kind of some answers as to maybe why I dabbled and experimented more than other people did. Uh, 
people that were active in sports, active in church, active in other things, they didn't necessarily go in the direction that I did. But here's the thing. Why, why again did I become a drug addict? A drug addict. Uh, do you know what it's like to be a drug addict? Hopefully not. <laughs> Show of hands. <laughs> Hopefully no hands. Uh, here's what it's like to be a drug addict. In the beginning, uh, sure, ooh, I like drugs. Ooh, they make me feel good. Um, but that's not what happens with drug addicts. With drug addicts, with every drug user, uh, that high, that wonderful feeling that you experience goes away. And then you no longer get that pleasurable feeling. But you still have to do it. And it's the worst feeling in the world. Uh, you will give everything away that you have for just one more of something that you now hate. You know, it's one thing when you're 15 and you're smoking a little pot and it's like, yay, this is an awesome experience. Dropping some acid, the walls are melting, it's very cool. But fast forward five, 10 years and it's doing the opposite. It, it's, it's doing the opposite. You want to know what it's like to be a drug addict? Um, uh, we'll talk about drugs that I was doing. Okay, cocaine, I started off in cocaine. Fast forward, I'm now on crack cocaine. What is it like for me if I were to use drugs today? If I use drugs today, crack cocaine, I'm going to go out, I'm going to get some right now, um, I would be holed up in a, in, a, in a motel room, I would barricade the walls, I would put the mattress up against the door to stop them from coming in, I would be up for three straight days, completely out of my mind, the TV would be talking to me, and I would be convincing me that they were coming in to kill me. I'd be poor in sweat because I knew in 15 minutes somebody was going to come in and put a bullet in my head. And that's what I'd be thinking for three straight days. Does that sound like fun? And imagine, if you will, that you know it's going to be that terrible. It's the worst nightmare that you can even imagine for the next three days, but you have to do it. Even today, I'm sober today, even today, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow, the last thought before I go to bed each night is a little whisper that says, why don't you go out and just get one more and burn your life to the ground again? See, I know what the consequences are. Being a drug addict means it doesn't matter. Being a drug addict, drug addicts don't go out to get high because it's fun anymore. I stepped over the line and I spent 10 years trying to undo it. It would be very understandable if I'm out there having a good time. And in the beginning, that's what it's like. But in the end, for me and for every single person that steps over the line, it's miserable. And it stays miserable. And that's what we keep doing. So did I do it to, sure. In the beginning, that's kind of why, but why again did I become the kind of guy that is willing to trade my car in? I've, I've given my car away for $20. That's an honest to God truth, and I've done it more than once. I've handed my key to a total stranger for $20. Brand new car. Take it, just give me one more. Imagine the most valuable thing that you guys have. Give it away. Give it away for 20 more minutes. That's what it's like to be a drug addict. So was it because of that? Not necessarily. So um, we'll go through my life. So now I'm 15 years old, and I pick up my first drink and drug. I remember exactly where it was at. I was standing in the Griffith Little League baseball field, and my buddy had a couple beers, and he had stolen from his parents or whatever, and I drank a couple beers, and I enjoyed it. Uh, it's interesting, uh, the effect that that had on me. And I don't know if it had that same effect on other people, but I spent my life feeling disconnected. Um, uh, loneliest guy in a crowded room kind of thing. And when I drank, it connected me. It was artificial, but it didn't matter for a guy like me. I felt like I, I fit in. I, I, I clicked. And there were never any negative consequences back then. I started getting into trouble. Um, my grades started slipping. I got arrested a couple times. Um, I flipped my car off when I was 17, drunk. My girlfriend got uh, so injured she had a brain aneurysm. Uh, these were not negative consequences because I really liked that euphoric feeling. Even in the beginning, I would give up just about anything to have that feeling again. I drank for the first time, I was 15 years old. Within a week, I was smoking cigarettes, I was smoking pot, I was dropping ass, and I was getting drunk every single day. Sometimes I had one beer, sometimes I had six or seven. The biggest problem is that I lived in Indiana, 
bars were, and liquor stores weren't open. <laughs> but I could figure out some way. Sometimes we'd steal from my parents, but I loved it. And I'm going to tell you, if, 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 if that feeling that I got in the beginning still happened, I would probably still be drunk today. Uh, but the reality is if I drank a beer or did any kind of drugs, it wouldn't be like that. It'll never be like that for me again. It'll be miserable. And even though I know it's miserable, again, there's still a small part of me that says, why not just go up for one more time? Being homeless wouldn't be a negative consequence. I've been homeless. I've given it all away. I've lost more jobs than you can count. You know, I've, I've lost relationships, my family, etc. And I would give it all up for just one more. And I did it. I did it time and again. So why do you guys think that I became a drug addict? My brother didn't. Again, he was popular. He was into sports. He got into some things. Um, my brother drank and smoked pot with me. We became the Lee brothers. We were the Lee brothers. Again, we were student council presidents. <clears throat> I'll, t you know, I'll tell you what my, my brother's speech was. I was the, uh, the year before. I was in 1987. I was the student council president. I had long hair. They call me the stoner student council president. So the next year, my brother's uh, speech, they did little speeches, and we would vote. My brother had a, a very simple speech, and please don't use this speech in your high school. <laughs> He'll still be mad at me. His speech was this, if you vote for me, I'll throw the biggest victory party you'll ever see. And that's it. And he sat down. Landslide victory. Everybody voted for my brother. And sure enough, we had the biggest victory party you ever saw and kegs of beer and everything like that. My parents were alcoholic. They didn't, uh, we were allowed to drink and smoke cigarettes in my house. Uh, when I drank for the first time, not only did I feel a sense of connection, I also became kind of popular. And why did I become kind of popular? Because every Friday night, the place to go was my house. We had cases of beer in the fridge, and people would come over, 20, 30 people, and you could drink and pass out. I was that house, and I don't know whose house it is, but, but you know there's the house that you can go to. Their parents aren't around, that kind of thing. That was my house. And it was an awesome place to go, and people went there and all that stuff. So, so there you go. So, so me and my brother, we become the Lee brothers, and we are the party brothers, uh, police are showing up and raiding our parties, these kind of things. But understand, we're running the same thing. I mean, we're both doing the same exact thing. Why did I become a drug addict and my brother didn't? Again, we did the exact same thing. Does any of you guys have a, uh, a hint, an idea? What about you? Yeah, you. No? No? Yes? In a, in a way, um, but we, we shared a lot of the same friends. Remember, we were kind of partying together. So there's a lot of carryover. And when you're, when you're one year apart, you do kind of have a lot of crossover. So um, I will say, though, as I became deeper in drugs, uh, my friends changed. You know? you know? And I just started hanging out with people that used harder and harder drugs. Um, by the time I was 19, I was the first person in Griffith, Indiana to be arrested on a heroin charge. Uh, by the time I was 20, I was a drug dealer. I carried a Glock 9mm uh, on my side, and I sold cocaine and drugs. Uh, 21, I got my first DUI. Uh, 22 or 23, my family threw me out of their homes and didn't want anything to do with me. Um, I moved out to California to get away from my friends. And I moved in with a grandfather who I promptly ripped off 30 days later, and he threw me out as well. I was arrested for methamphetamine possession. I was arrested for a bunch of stuff out there. Um, I bounced in and out of homeless shelters and lived on the streets of Southern California, which, by the way, it's not that warm at night in Southern California. It's actually really cold. It's like a desert out there. So, so that's my train wreck of a life. Um, and again, I went through over 20 drug and alcohol rehab fac facilities trying to get sober. Yes, back there. I'm sorry? How did I get there? Um, my family was willing to send me on a one-way ticket because they didn't want me here. No. So, um, so any, other, any other suggestions, any other ideas? as to why it is, yes? You said your brother was an addict, so you couldn't take drugs as often. 
Oh, yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, he did. My brother went to Purdue right after graduating, uh, just like I did. My brother finished, got his psychology degree. Uh, he lives in a huge house, actually not too far from here. Uh, a super big house with palm trees, fake palm trees, and, and uh, I think a 60-foot swimming pool, and an um, automated cover, and a, a half a million dollar house, and all that wonderful stuff. And three kids, and a great life. Uh, I am still trying to rebuild from a life that I took a flamethrower to, time and time again. Um, is it because he couldn't? No, he did. We partied pretty much neck and neck, exactly the same, all through high school. Same drug, same amount. We both drank every day. Uh, he is not an alcoholic today. He is not a drug addict. He might drink once every year, something like that. Um, yes? A little bit, about six months, yeah. Sure, theory away. You started before, you said you didn't have very many friends. Mm -hmm. He was the athlete, he had a big social group. Maybe when he started, his friends were legit friends. I told him that this wasn't a good idea, and we were already too far in that you were able to make friends. No, my friends thought it was, yeah, we had a little circle. You know, as you guys see, I mean, I became the stoner. I don't know if you still call them. Do you still have stoners in your high school? Is that yeah? The burnout. What they call them burnouts back. That was a burnout. A rock T-shirt and long hair. That was me. So I don't know what they look like now. But I was uh, I was that. But you know what? Um, in the beginning, again, we shared the same friends. Uh, me and my brother are very much opposites. My brother's a little bit bigger than I am. He's more sporty and all that stuff. He still works out all the time. I'm the smart one, he's the athlete, he's the family man, I don't have kids. Or, I mean, we're almost exact opposites. It's like that movie Twins back in, however, with Arnold Schwarzenegger and the other guy. So it's like that. Um, I wouldn't say it's the friends. Uh, a lot of times the friends are a sign. Like, I mean, obviously, if I'm just hanging out with a bunch of potheads, I mean, one could argue that I'm probably smoking pots, you know? But is it, is it because of that, or am I drawn to that? Because it's my universe, it's where, you know, see, I, I never once thought the drugs were bad. I mean, sure, we had the classes and all that stuff, but the feeling that I got, um, I kind of felt like I was superior. Number one, I was pretty smart. I was very smart. And, and, and when people would tell me, oh, drugs are bad and all that stuff, it was like, Pff. yeah, well, my mom drinks, so what's the difference? You know? And I could argue that point and all that stuff. Um, no, again, everything was neck and neck, and it's important that you guys kind of figure this out because some of you guys are already making the same choices and the same decisions as I did that put me in a position uh, that I couldn't put the brakes on. Any other answers? Yes? Some, some might say that, um, possibly, okay? Anybody else? You guys want the answer? I'll tell you exactly the answer. Um, and I heard the answer from another counselor um, who gave it to me. And this guy, um, it's kind of an interesting story. Um, this guy always wanted to go, it's a story and you'll understand, when I tell you this story you'll understand why I became a drug addict and my brother didn't. Um, this guy, he's a friend of mine today, uh, he always wanted to go to India. He wanted to drop everything and go and hang out with like a Tibetan monk guy and like do that for a year. He's like one of those groovy dudes that you run into, right? So this was his thing. And he saved up all his money, this is a true story. And he spent every dime he had, and he flew out to India to spend a year out in India. And part of the thing that they were doing when they were hanging out with all these monks and stuff like that, one of the things that they had to do is they had to climb up a mountain, and there was a temple at the top. And, and it took, like, all day. Like, like what you got, I mean, it was, like, it was like a huge trek up this long path and all that stuff. Well, while they were doing it... Um, uh, there were all kinds of lists of things to do and things not to do, and there were all kinds of warnings um, about some of the animals and stuff like that. And do, do any of you know what the most dangerous animal is in India? Tiger. Everybody thinks it's a tiger. It's not a tiger. What is it? 
Snow leopard? No. My friend asked this. Because they said, look out for this, look out for the crocodiles, look out for this. And my friend said to this enlightened Zen master, or whatever the heck, little wizened old guy that's wandering up the hill and taking him up there, he said, he said, is there anything we need to look out for? He said, what is, and he said, look out for snakes, look out for that. He said, well, what is the most dangerous thing? And the guy said uh, that the most dangerous animal in India is a rogue elephant, which is a lone elephant. Elephants travel in herds, right? And they said that the most dangerous animal in India is a lone elephant, a rogue elephant. And my friend said, well, what do we do if we see one? And the Buddhist monk guy said, at that point, it is no longer your decision. And the answer to why I became a drug addict and my brother didn't is because it had nothing to do with my willpower. It had nothing to do with how smart I was or how dumb my brother was or how good at sports he was and how terrible I was. It had nothing to do with popularity. It had nothing to do with any of those. Every time I picked up a drink and a drug, it was no longer my decision. And here's the trick. It was never my brother's decision either. See, you might think that maybe my brother made moral choices. It was his decision not to become a drug addict. <clears throat> my brother to this day, who works with me now, as an interventionist, will tell you it was no more his decision not to be a drug addict than it was to be when it was mine. My brother to this day may very well be one drink away from being me. And that's how it's going to be for you. Just like the guy that wandered through India, when you, when you see that rogue elephant, it's no longer your decision. Here's the deal. Some of you, whether it's tonight, whether it's tomorrow, the next day, there's nothing that I can say that's going to scare you out of smoking a joint or drinking a few beers, but I'm going to tell you this. I don't care what happened last time. I don't care if you got away with it or you got a real euphoric high and you didn't become an alcoholic. The next time you will it, will, it will not be your decision if you do. And here's the thing. When you do step over that line, you will spend the next 10, 15, 20 years of your life wishing that you could undo it, as I did. So when you guys spend tonight, I want you to understand what it's like to really be homeless. Those people made a series of choices, yes, but one day they stepped over the line and couldn't undo it and they gave away every single thing for something that they hate. And that's what it's like to be a drug addict. And that's what it's like to be homeless. So when you think about it and you go out from here, think about the choices that you've already made and the choices that you're gonna make. And understand, it isn't about the popular or unpopular. It isn't about the smartest or the stupidest or the this or the that. Each time you roll the dice, it is not your choice. So hopefully you guys can spend tonight kind of thinking about that. And uh, enjoy your night tonight. And uh, you guys are lucky. Tomorrow you get to go home. I didn't. I didn't. So that's pretty much it. Thank you guys very much for your time. And uh, enjoy your night out. Okay.